the biggest week, the biggest strength on Florida's team is their secondary. Their secondary will shut down your passing game and will make you go one dimensional. You make them go one dimensional where they're going to hand the ball off. Well, LSU is going to be one dimensional anyway. They're going to want to run the ball and everything. Jonathan Bullard, all those guys up front, all their linebackers and stuff, their defense is the strength of this ball club. If they can shut down Furnett, they can win this ball game easily. But it all hinders. You'll know, you'll know the first quarter if they can do it or not. We will know in the first quarter going into the second quarter if they can do it or not. Okay. You got anything else you want to add in there, Steve? Are we good? Uh, I don't know. Nah, not really. Right. Nah, I got nothing. Well, well you know, how about the kid uh, we found today? What yeah, about that guy? How about that fat head? How about the transition into that? The yeah, reporter okay. Reporter arrested, accused of finding what a f- gun at pregnant hold girlfriend. Up. What a fucking idiot. What a downright moronic thing to freaking do. You're going to stick a gun to your pregnant girlfriend's head. Yeah. You're an idiot. You are a certifiable retard. And guess where he's from? Tampa. That explains a lot. <laughs> Dude, yeah. you are you are stupid and you as soon as you got booked in jail, they kicked you off the team. As soon as they found out about it, they were like, yeah, you're gone. He didn't play. He hasn't played at all for the team. He hasn't played the last two weeks. But who cares? Bye. See you later. Go. The, wo- the woman's just as stupid. She didn't come back. She t- kept this for two weeks. Like, don't keep it. Say something about it. I'm like, you were an idiot, and you should be thrown in jail, and you should be sent to Connecticut to go chill with Aaron Hernandez. Because you are a moron. And you know what I like about this, though? He was recruited by Muschamp, by the way. <laughs> McElwain ain't playing around with this crap anymore. You do something stupid, you're gone. You do something stupid, he says it. He goes, he made the choice not to be on this football team anymore. Make them kids accountable for the stupid shit that they do and stop babying these bastards. And that's what he's doing, and that's why I like him so much. Stop babying these kids. Make them stand up to their responsibility that they do something stupid. Look what he did with Will Greer. Made him come to the press conference and had him talk. What other coach would you want to known that would have yanked his kid up there and said, hey, you're going to have to talk Make about it, and you're, and you're going to have to be accountable? And that's what college football needs is more guys like this that hold people accountable. Not your Urban Myers who are and shit like that that don't want to freaking hold anybody accountable. Circle or your, of, hey, don't forget Urban Myers, circle or, of trust bullshit. Or your, or your Jimbo Fishers who, oh, oh, he didn't do nothing wrong. No, he just went and fucking stole crab legs, fucking stole shit. You got a guy that stole somebody's scooter who's still playing ball for you to this day. That and punch his girlfriend in the exactly, face. Exactly, but you, but you didn't do nothing about none of this crap. That's why I like McElwain. Hold every single thing that these idiots do accountable. Don't let them go get it over on people just because they can play a game. Your thoughts on this, Steve? Because I know you, uh, you, you, you told me about this, and I just yeah. As soon as I see it, I was like, is this not the biggest punch in the pants you can ever have? You know, and it really is, you know, and I want to ask both of you guys, it's just a, the simplest question. I'm sure you guys are going to answer the same way. How hard is it, would it for you both to go to a program on a full scholarship, go play football, and not have to work, get your school for free, you're around a bunch of beautiful women in the state of Florida of all the damn things, and just play fucking football. How hard is it? How hard would that to be for you two guys? It's Honestly. Me. Not hard, hard at all. Be? Not hard at all. <laughs> I'd be not too, hard at all. I'd be too I tired. Mean, <laughs> let's just be real. I'm in Florida. I'm in the sun all day where I got beaches around. I've got beautiful women. I could go to school and just play football all, all day long. And all I have to do is study and make about... I don't know what it is, their GPA, about 2, 2.5, just to stay on the team. Right. How hard is that? I, I don't, I don't understand. Show up and wave. You know, I don't, I don't understand what's the mentality of these kids. It's because they're entitled. They've been entitled. All, and that's the bad part about sports now in general. 
They're not just entitled in college. They're entitled throughout every freaking thing they do now because we make sports such a big, huge, damn priority. Everything they go and do from these seven-on-seven seven camps to all of this stuff, they are treated like that from the time they are 13 years old or 14 years old because they have a gift to play a sport. We need to stop entitling these guys when they're so damn young because when they get older, they get stupider because they still think they're entitled. And that's the problem that we are having. I don't want my son to go through that crap. I don't want my son to act like he's an entitled poor little brat just because he can play a game. I don't want it. He needs to know responsibility, and that's their big problem. These things, they, these stupid idiots think they can go and get away with anything because they've been getting away with anything for so damn long. Just because they can do one certain little thing, they think people are going to be able to continuously get them out of it. You have to be held responsible for your actions. Absolutely. You know, you got to be able to separate the bullshit from reality because, again... I've seen a lot of this shit. Even when I went down, I used to go to Florida State a lot, and I used to go see my buddy and hang out with him at Dope Campbell, and we used to go to Osceola Hall, and you run into a lot of the football players, and those are the bunch of biggest fatheads you'll ever meet, and you get the same bullshit there, and I don't want to hear no Seminole fan say, it's different. No, it's not. It's the same shit everywhere. Um, but this, it, I think it also stems a little bit from the parenting, too. It, I mean, it's a little bit of a home training issue as well, but... At what point do you not just get it? Do you not just say, shit, I, I can hang with beautiful women, have sex with any one of them, and play football? I got it great. And have the opportunity and a prime time program be on, be on TV every single week. Get my name out there, especially if you're good. Come on, man. Really? You're that much of a dumbass? The bad part is... I'm, 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 I'm just dumb, I'm, I'm dumbfounded about it, man. I, I don't get it. Even at... When I was a dumbass in high school, I got it. I knew if I had my opportunity to do that, I knew to right. separate the bullshit so I can go and do that. You're right. You're it's right, just Steve. like it's home training, too. You're 100% right, Steve. Well, the, but the bad part is their home training is my son's good at this, so I got to make sure he's able to go all this stuff, and they don't hold no accountability because they think whenever exactly. he's go pro, he's going to be able to take care of. And that's where half of, these, and half of these parents that live in these bad neighborhoods and stuff like that, that's their mentality. And that's their thing. They want their kid to go and do it so they can get them out of where they're at. Instead of teaching them the right way to go about stuff, they don't. And that's why you get stupid idiots like this guy. Uh, let's move on. Yeah. And first, and, and then all you gun people don't come out there and go, how did he get a gun and blah, blah, blah. Anybody can get a fucking gun. So just get over the gun issue and stop saying, we need gun control. Just stop getting over it. Because anybody can go and get a gun. Just like anybody can go and get marijuana now, anybody can go and get a gun. Marijuana is illegal. Guns aren't. People can get stuff no matter if it's legal or illegal. So just get over it. Mm -hmm. Stop complaining about guns. Right, See, I like that I have this because I can just go off on this stuff. All right, let's, let's Stop <laughs> breaking the law, asshole! All right, let's, let's, let's transition. Into, Quick, anybody uh, tell me what movie that's from. I'm drawing one. Liar, liar. I'm, I'm, there you go. Boom. Liar, liar. And Jim Carrey goes, this guy fell through the roof of somebody's house and hurt his leg while he was trying to rob him and he wants you to represent him. Stop breaking the law, asshole. I, I'm ashamed to even admit that I've never seen Liar, Liar. Oh, my God. you got to watch it. You're, you're Dude, I'm a movie buff and I've never seen that. It's and amazing. I feel ashamed that. I just said that. It's all good. you got to catch it up. <laughs> a goose. <laughs> All right, transitioning into... Uh, it's on Netflix. Um, Everything's on Netflix. Injury news. You can tell uh, your wife, hey, we can Netflix and chill, but you already did the chilling parts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, buddy. Uh, Netflix and chill. All right. Um, then that, that goes away for him in a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm fitting that we talk about this. Uh, Nick Chubb. <laughs> we go from Netflix and chilling to talking about a chub. Talking about the chub. In, 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 in uh, injury news, he had a significant, significant knee injury uh, in the game against Tennessee, the first player of the game. Um, Everything blew up except his ACL. ACL, so. Uh, Rick is, is saying he's, it's pretty safe that Chubb will miss the rest of the season, and they're going to go and get 
him hospitalized for observation, and and uh, he'll, he's going to expect to go surgery within the next two weeks and uh, make a full recovery. But uh, I go ahead and let you uh, talk about this, Steve. And I don't know if you watched. I'm sure you saw the uh, the uh, gruesome play and everything like that. But just talk about Chubb's impact and this injury here to this uh, Georgia ball club that was uh, already kind of reeling a little bit. You know, I seen a I seen a a brief second of the injury. I didn't see how it happened, but I did see him. My like, always part I see was him going to the ground, and that's all I caught. And I knew that he was uh, he was out. But when it comes to injury, like from what I know, from what I read on it, when it comes to injury like this, now what what point do you look at Marcus Lattimore and think should I just sit out and just wait for my eligibility to kick in and I just go pro? You know what I mean? Right. Do, do I do that? Do I do I do I sit out a year or just let it go even after I'm fully 100% healthy? The talent's there, the kid. It's obvious. You just put it on the shelf for a little bit longer. Keep training, finish your school one more year, and then just go, go pro, knowing what you got. Is that what you, would, would you guys be safe to safe bet to do, or would you go back and play another year? Well, especially that, that's that's a that's a very a very uh, sensitive subject with a lot of people. And especially with, uh, especially with running backs, that the running back position is the one position that I'd say, dude, if you can, because the pounding they take, that's the one position where I'd go, look, if you know you're good, be a Fournette, uh, a Chubb, and, and some Elliot, of these, maybe. yeah, and Elliot, some of these other good running backs. This is where you have to look at it, and you have to go, look, I have enough tape on me. That shows what I can do. Do I want to take another year of getting beating, especially if you go to a Georgia or an LSU where that's all they're going to be able to do? And you're going to be carrying the ball, DeMarco Murray amounts of times, to where you're going to get beat up. They don't, they don't, they, it, 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 it's bad to say, but they don't care about running backs. No. Like people used to. They, they hand you the ball because you're their best player and you're their, their only offense. So that's what they got to do. And so as far as that goes, I don't have a problem with them sitting out of here. Especially oh, my since, God, dude. Especially since they're in the SEC. I have no problem with them sitting out of here. But it, I just – Did you just I see – yeah, I'm just Oh, it, that. it was horrible. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, it, it, his knee went – his mm-hmm. leg went completely sideways. I'm amazed it wasn't worse. But the worst oh. part about it was the TV kept going back and showing him and they actually showed his eyeballs roll up into the back of his head oh. and him pass out yeah. because of the pain. First off, if that happened, you should have put his ass on a cart and took him straight to the back. Yeah. That's the yeah. thing that not walked him over to the sideline. Put his ass on the cart, take him straight back to the back. Nobody needed to see that what happened. But yeah, yeah I wouldn't blame I wouldn't blame him at all. If any running back was like, I'm sitting out for the year and then I'm gonna go pro after. Because that's been a lot of talk from what I've heard a lot of the the higher ups talking about uh Frenette. Maybe he should uh, sit out yep. and rest it up. I mean, it's kinda almost how like Clowney took out a what was it, a million dollar insurance policy on himself? Did you see what <laughs> Clowney was a walking injury waiting to happen anyway. That's true. He was he was he yeah. and, and now you're he's proven it. He's a walking injury yeah. waiting to happen. He still hasn't fully came back from the first injury that he had. And then he had oh, another yeah. one right on top of it. So he hasn't fully came back. So it's it, it it's it's a it's a bad thing, and especially with running backs. Well, you got Cook as well, and all these guys. All these guys can take off a year. It wouldn't bother me none. Because we play all of them. Yeah. All of them can take off a year. It wouldn't bother me at all. <laughs> all right. Uh, Steve, I know it's been a minute since you've been on here, but I'll let you talk a little bit about your uh, your Wolverines, man. They're, they've been uh, shutting people out here, man. Uh, give, give him a shout out and, and talk a little bit about him before we uh, go to break here. Oh, well, my Wolverines, let's see here. Uh, you know, 3 0 for the first time since what, 1984? Three shutout. We don't know. Games. We're not Michigan fans. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's just, it's blown my mind, dude. I mean, I'm witnessing something I've never seen in my lifetime. I mean, 1980, I might have been years old <laughs> you know so i mean this is amazing I, it's just i don't know what 
I'm watching this and I'm going, where the hell was this team last year? 